Wrist guards, baby. Well, many regrets. Oh look, ever since Freedom Day, people are back again. Ah, it's hot! That was what, three, four months ago that I was over on that pathway over there, you know, in the hour before the world around us locked down. Here we are again. It's been good. Back down to only 200 cases per day rather than close to 2,000. Today is uh, 26th of um, June, our last sort of taste of freedom. Everyone's just out here enjoying each other's company until our lives are locked down again. It's only for two weeks this time instead of three months or however long the last one was, but yeah. Ho 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 ho! Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Oh, you're actually not kidding. Ooh, awkward. Why, yes, hello, Freedom Day. Yes, uh, well, actually, that's old news, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah, so anyways, Sydney, it's been, it's been a while since uh, Freedom Day has been here. What Freedom Day essentially was, was that uh, it was the Monday following uh, the state of New South Wales hitting a double vaccination rate of 70%. That's when the government, the state government announced that Sydney, New South Wales and large would be facing like more freedoms such as like no mask, like no outdoor mask mandates, being able to travel more than five kilometers, uh, being able to work in office spaces and uh, some degree of like of students being able to go back on campus, that sort of thing. Uh, more rules about like hospitality being open. I finally got to see Shang-Chi in theaters, despite the fact that Shang-Chi was filmed here in Sydney. <laughs> how, how ironic that it, the city that the movie was filmed in, mo like mostly in a film studio, that was the city that couldn't watch the film, but then the rest of the world could. It's just a twisted fate of irony. What's happened has happened, you know, can't do much about it. It's a pandemic after all. Sometimes it's just gonna, sometimes things explode. So, you know, you never take anything for granted, which is why, yeah, you know, just make the most of it. You know, going outdoors, exercising, roller skating. <laughs> I try to roller skate and do more outdoor activities, which is how I ended up with this bloody condition. <laughs> Whilst, you know, they say, you know, don't, don't take any chances and stuff, but also do it, uh, do it more cautiously, you know. I mean, to quote one of my, like, one of my favorite, favorite sort of sayings, it's, uh, Al Muallim asks Al Tayyir, what is it to transcend? And Al Tayyir replies, uh, to realize that nothing is true and that everything is permitted and that laws divide, and that laws derive not from divinity, but from reason. I understand out that our creed does not command us to be free, it commands us to be wise. So, it's a double-edged sword, you know, freedom of mobility, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, you're, you're free to do whatever you want, but you're also the architect of your own actions. Prime case being that. So, you know, now I've got wrist guards, all that good stuff. But there's another thing with the whole Freedom Day thing that was set upon us was that uh, I, I really started to pick up the camera again. Like it had been months upon months upon months of just like camera complacency. I was just like mainly do, like playing video games and so on and like I hadn't touched the camera for a long time. So I was starting to feel like I was getting a bit rusty, forgetting how to like do certain things that used to be second nature to me. And then also too, I was recovering from a sprained wrist. Yes, it was sprained, not fractured. Nothing was broken as the x-ray showed, thankfully. I'm like actively going to physio now, like every week or so now. So, uh, yeah, just to get the tendons working again, well, properly. And, uh, yeah, what was my point again? <laughs> but yes, I was also just taking care not to, like, sprain my wrist even more, doing heavy lifting and all that, because, like, filmmaking, especially if you're in, like, rigging and, like, camera department and um, prop and set design, all that stuff, there's a lot of heavy machinery, a lot of heavy lifting. And, uh, yeah, I can't believe how much heavy lifting I used to do and how much of a strain that would put on muscles and bones I didn't even know I had before this uh, this bloody thing happened. I, I still, I, I, risk, I, I wish I wore wrist guards back then. I'm so stupid. I have wrist guards now. It was like this like $35 pack from, uh, from online. It was like a three piece, like elbow, knees, wrist sort of pack. It's just for, for less than $50, I could have sp like spared myself so much turmoil. Oh well. Lesson learned the hard way. Ooh, and along with the, yeah, picking up the cameras and stuff, um, yeah, I remember like some time back, uh, a dear like film school friend of mine, uh, Daniel Tai, had uh, recommended something called uh, vertical anamorphic setup. And uh, well, what on earth is that? 
let's go outside and uh, yeah, I will discuss it with you. Well, that's quite a contraption, isn't it? What I've got here is the Blackmagic uh, Pocket 4K in a vertical setup. It's very, very, very dangerously set up. As you can see, it's not even screwed in properly with the um, quick release plate. I mean, look at this. Look how loose the release plate is. Quite the contraption indeed. And very dangerous. Wow, very dangerous. But yes. As you can see, the camera is mounted vertically. So yes, this uh, film school friend of mine uh, recommended this uh, idea to me. And yes, he is massive like gear tinkerer. He just has big, big camera geek. And like he knows, I don't know, from, from, like all the ins and outs of like lighting, cameras, uh, cinematography, all that good stuff. And, uh, and photography as well. So um, yeah, I'll put his uh, Instagram on the screen right now. So you should, uh, you know, definitely check him out. Now on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, oh, I should just wait for the wind. Of course, when I'm speaking, the wind picks up, you know? Normally how the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera works uh, with anamorphic mode is that it just cuts off the side pixels to make you record in like this 43 aspect ratio of like 2880 by 2160. So you lose a lot of details right like that way. Like you're not recording in uh, in 4K, you're recording in like 2.8K. What's the opposite of open gate? I'm not sure. Close gate, I suppose. But um, yeah, they crop off the sides in order for you to put on an anamorphic lens or projector or whatever, or peripheral like this. So that like you can squeeze in twice the horizontal visual information so that you get like a 2.35 or 2.39 like or 2.66 to 1 sort of uh, aspect ratio rather than this ultra thin one with it that you would get if you use the full sense the full width of the sensor which would result in like this razor thin anamorphic video which uh, family guy sort of parody Lawrence of Arabia well, I can't see anything. Yeah, typically in a normal sane world, this camera would be oriented the way it's supposed to be, which is, you know, sideways. And then you would put on your anamorphic peripheral with the oval shape faced like this, like upwards like that. Here in this instance, because the camera is oriented 90 degrees, now the uh, horizontal bit is actually the uh, 2160 array. And not only that, I'll just turn it on. I will uh, set up the camera to record in the full resolution, the full sensor. So that's um, so that's a 4096 by 2160. But now that it's upright like this, it's actually like 2160 by 4096. Instead of just like attaching the anamorphic lens, like I would if it was oriented properly, but instead now I would orient it that way. So now it's the 2160 array that has twice the information, visual information squeezed in, the two times information squeezed. Oh, that is a very unsafe. <laughs> so now essentially I have, uh, let me think, like 4360 by uh, 4096. So it's like comes out to like a ratio of like 1.06. To one basically in editing I just like slightly crop that down to like one to one aspect ratio now of course it definitely helps to have a secondary monitor that has a lot more like video assist tools such as squeezing not just in like uh, the horizontal but also vertical and then you can just tune it to like exactly however much uh, squeezing or de-squeezing you want so yes now I can utilize the full sensor size rather than having this like closed gate sort of a recording mode, whereby instead of the 2160 sort of like uh, array of pixels being on the sides, I turn it on its head, literally. The old vertical has now become the new horizontal, which produces a square image, which actually utilizes the full sensor rather than just cropping off the sides, which produces these images that you would have seen on Instagram, enjoy. Definitely reserve this idea for the more like art house sort of uh, 
piece is. Um, it's a bit of a pain to set this up and it's a bit uh, precarious if I'm being honest. And oh my goodness, how silly of me. I completely forgot to mention whilst I was outdoors uh, 10 minutes ago <laughs> that, uh, what, well, 10 minutes ago that I was filming that segment, that uh, yeah, when I was like uh, doing, uh, when I was directing and filming for this uh, YouTube channel called Coconut Face Comedy, the latest uh, episode that should be, why did I call it episode? The latest skit video that is up now it called Heart Attack, uh, that used a similar sort of setup actually, and um, a similar uh, anamorphic setup as what you're seeing now, but with a custom sort of like lens housing that was like custom designed and like 3D printed by this same person, Daniel Tai. My goodness, that man can do everything. Yeah, he like custom designed the whole casing to house the the um, Helios F, uh, F, uh, Helios something something M. Oh, uh, what's it called again? Helios something M. Something M. I can't remember what it's called. Helios 44M. That's right. It's a, a Helios 44M, which is a 58 mil, and uh, yeah, and then he would adapt that to like an anamorphic peripheral. I think. Oh, I don't even know what anamorphic peripheral he has. It's not this. this. This is called the IT16F, which I found like on eBay. On eBay, it can be very hit and miss. Like, you, it's just the luck of the draw, whether you get like a good deal or not with these sort of uh, DIY anamorphic setups. Yeah, Daniel, he has like another sort of anamorphic peripheral inside that housing and then adapted to an EF mount, which works perfectly on my Metabones uh, Ultra XL. I don't know. It's it's the 0.71 times uh, magnification, focal reduction. So, Jesus Christ, my, my terminology is getting all kinds of messed up. Focal reduction. Anywho, back to the version of myself from uh, me recording myself uh, t from 10 minutes ago, which you're gonna see now. You know, I just realized it's been like three, four months since I've properly been out shooting. Um, even though it's like lockdown has eased now in Sydney, it's like a lot of people still working from home. A lot of people are seeing the value of working from home rather than in an office, in a, in a shared space where they have to commute to work and so on and then uh, you know, have to wear masks and stuff. And then they just come to realize that a lot of work, they just really only need to come into the office maybe once per week or per fortnight or whatever the case may be, get the relevant work that they need in a meeting or something and then the rest they can just carry on in the comfort of their own home. If they're like, especially since they are using the desktops and monitors that their offices just give you anyway. So yeah, so it's like the people are not are not exactly out there in large numbers for there to be a lot of uh, videography sort of projects in mind. But anyways, uh, I digress. So once again, big shout out to Daniel Tai for uh, recommending this uh, vertical anamorphic setup. It looks dope. It looks art house as fuck. Hope the rest of you Sydney siders and uh, Aussies are going to enjoy the summer soon. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so Sydney Film Festival is coming up, so that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, again, check out uh, Daniel Tai's Instagram and uh, catch you later. Thanks for procrastinating. Wait, thanks for watching. Keep on procrastinating. <laughs> See, I haven't done a piece to camera for so long that I've just forgotten some of my... I've lost some of my mojo. All right, see ya. By the way, I finally got myself one of these. Yes, so actually it's pretty surprising that this whole time that I never got into these like wireless lav setups. Oh. It seems so stupidly obvious that I should have gotten these kinds of things since the very beginning, being that I'm doing like videography and cinematography kind of thing.